the RTX 3090 has a major flaw. Oh no, let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Alright, so real quick before everyone goes into a panic, if you own an RTX 3090 and you're wondering right now, is my RTX 3090 going to go up in flames? No, that's probably not going to be the case. Uh, it's probably going to be fine, especially if you're just gaming, but depending on what you do with your RTX 3090, there is a possibility that you could be throttling, and in a worst case scenario, uh, you could actually reduce the lifespan of your graphics card. So what am I talking about here? Well, so there's been a lot of reports of RTX 3090s having very, very hot memory on the back. In fact, it's been over 100 degrees Celsius, which does actually exceed the spec for GDDR6X. And the reason why this is occurring is because, uh, well, if you take a look here at this cooler that I have on me of an RTX 3090, you can see that it's a very large cooler. It's very beefy, and you would expect that it could handle uh, the thermals of the RTX 3090 pretty well, even despite the fact that it's a 350 watt card. And if we do take apart this GPU cooler here right now, uh, which I'm going to do if it does come apart, there we go. Um, we can take a look and see that on the front of the GPU, it is going to be making pretty good contact with not only the GPU die in the center here, uh, but on top of that, you can also see that they have the thermal pads making contact with the GDDR6X. Uh, however, unlike the RTX 3080, which only has memory on the front in like pretty much all cards that have come before the 3090, I'm sure there have been a couple in the past that had memory on the back. Uh, the 3090 is one of the only GPUs that I know of that actually has memory on the back and here's where things get a little bit weird. So despite the fact that this is making very good contact with not only the GPU die, the memory, as well as the VRM, so this should be a pretty good cooler, uh, except for the fact that it was getting very hot in this cooler. Anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of this actual GPU cooler because what we can see here is that while it does have some thermal pads that do make contact with the VRM on the RTX 3090, as you can see here, they got all these thermal pads. Well, the problem is, is what we're looking at here is just a simple metal uh, piece here. It's really not going to be very effective at dissipating all that heat and the GDDR6X that you find on the RTX 3090 can get very hot because not only is it you know right on top of some more memory that could be soaking into that uh, if all that heat isn't extracted from the GPU as well as the memory on the front fast enough but on top of that the GDDR6X modules are actually hotter and they do draw more power than regular GDDR6 despite the fact that it is supposed to be more power efficient because GDDR6X is blasting well past its power efficiency curve because it's clocked so much higher than the regular GDDR6. So of course when you take this little tiny metal cooler on the back which really doesn't have any active cooling whatsoever it's just making contact uh, with the chips well it's just simply not going to do a good enough job of getting that memory to be cool enough. So the problem that we get here is that the back memory chips on the RTX 3090 are getting way too hot. Now of course if you do have a very good cooler that's able to get a lot of that heat out of the front memory chips really quickly as well as the GPU die then you're probably not going to have too many issues, especially if you're just gaming on your card. Uh, however, if you are someone who, let's say, you're one of those people who likes to uh, mine on your card on the side uh, when you're not gaming on it, I do know that there's a lot of people who do that, and the RTX 3090 would be a very profitable card, so I'm sure there are a lot of people out there doing that. What people have found is that the memory chips on the back of the RTX 3090 are getting much harder doing that than, say, just gaming. It looks like a lot of times, in fact, uh, according to a recent Linus Tech Tips video, they were measuring temperatures that were over 100 degrees Celsius while they were mining Ethereum on the RTX 3090. So if you are doing something like that, uh, something that stresses the memory very, very hard, well, then you're going to be looking at a situation where you are going to be blasting past uh, the maximum temperature that's supposed to be reached by the GDDR6X. It looks like it's actually supposed to have a maximum temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. And once you approach about 105 degrees Celsius, you will start to actually thermal throttle on your memory. So it will start to downclock. And in a worst case scenario, this could actually lead to a shortened lifespan for the RTX 3090 overall and of course if you're spending you know 1500 US dollars to 2500 US dollars on a GPU you're definitely going to want to try and get the most lifespan out of this GPU as possible so you know the good thing about this news if you are really worried right now is that there are actually a couple really simple fixes so the first fix that you could do that's actually not too bad is that you know on your GPU if you do have a nice metal backplate on the back which all RTX 3090s at least hopefully should have a metal backplate if your 3090 doesn't have a metal backplate that's the first thing you need to do is get in contact 
with your manufacturer and get a metal backplate because you are absolutely going to need that even if you're just gaming on it. Um, but the first thing you can do because all of them should have metal backplates is you can just replace the thermal pads to get a slightly better thermal efficiency going between the memory chips on and the back of the backplate. Uh, the second thing that you can do is just increase airflow in your case itself. So if you do have good contact between the memory and the metal backplate, if you have good airflow in your case, you should get a pretty decent temperature while gaming out of the RTX 3090. Even if those memory chips on the back are getting pretty hot, that should allow them to not get uh, you know too hot. You should be uh, under 95 degrees Celsius, hopefully. And so then in that case, you won't have to worry about your uh, GPU dying prematurely, which of course nobody wants to see. And then the next thing that you can do, uh, which is going to be a little bit more work, is that you know there's a couple things. So the first thing you could do is just kind of point a fan directly at the back of your 3090. And, you know that's not too difficult to do. But another thing you could do if you want to take things a step further is you could actually buy this double-sided tape-like thermal pad that you can put between the backplate of your GPU, and then you, on top of that you can actually put some more uh, heat sinks. You can buy some heat sinks just off of Amazon, and then you can actually screw a fan into that. And of course, if you put those right over the memory chips, you'll actually get a lot better thermals out of your GPU, or at least hopefully you should, especially if you also replace the thermal pads between the memory chips and the backplate. And then the final thing that you can do is you can actually water cool your RTX 3090, and I definitely noticed that this did help significantly in my case. I did choose to water cool the RTX 3090 Strix, and I saw much better temperatures not only out of the GPU, but also out of the memory. And this is going to help a lot because if the GPU is getting really, really hot and it's not getting, you know, all that heat out into the cooler, you know, fast enough, what's going to happen is that a lot of that heat is going to leak into the memory chips and it's going to start to build up. So if you can get a water cooler on the RTX 3090, this is actually not only going to help the GPU temperatures significantly, but on top of that, you should also be seeing at least a little bit better memory temperatures because of course it's going to be not leaking all that heat into the other stuff. You're going to be transferring out of the GPU much quicker. And so you're going to be getting just much better thermals. And so, you know, personally, I would recommend water cooling the RTX 3090 because if you've already bought an RTX 3090, you've already sunk a lot of money into your PC. So if you can set up a water cooling loop or just buy an AIO that'll fit onto your GPU, I would recommend doing that because not only are you going to be getting much better temperatures out of your RTX 3090 GPU, but on top of that, you could be potentially getting better lifespan out of the GPU as you shouldn't be hitting dangerous temperatures on the GDDR6X. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that this is a huge deal or do you think that things are being massively overblown? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.